Hey guys, good morning. So, progress continues on the P40A project. Uh, I'm still doing wiring, and uh, wiring's not all that exciting to watch. So, I haven't uh, captured a whole lot of video of that. Connecting up all the relays uh, that power different things for the for the system, both the ECM side of the system and the chassis side of the system. So, I thought I would take a second and show you guys how standard relays work. These are your basic cheap, you know, 30 amp relays. You can get them uh, a dozen of them probably for five bucks. Uh, okay, so here we have our pigtail with our pre stripped ends. I'm going to set the multimeter onto continuity so we get a signal when there's a continuous circuit. I'm going to verify that we have signal uh, by touching these two together. So we can hear that it's working, so I don't have my wires crossed, my battery is good, and everything on the multimeter. Okay, so if we take our pin 30, which it's going to vary depending on uh, where you get your relays from, the colors of these wires are going to change and vary. It doesn't really matter what color they are as long as they uh, work well. So if we probe this right now, I'm connecting one side of my multimeter to the 30 pin and then I'm going to probe the other two, the 87 and the 87A uh, so that I can show you how those circuits work. So if we're putting power in here on our 30 pin then we should have yeah, we should have continuity here on our 87 87A and that's the center center wire here, the red one, on our pigtail that's the center pin on your relay and as the meter is uh, sounding off here we know that that's a continuous circuit so if I put 12 volts power here I'm gonna get 12 volts power out here all the time without triggering the relay without doing anything so that's called normally closed circuit so that means we normally have a continuous circuit between our 30 pin and our 87A now if I connect to our 87 pin you get nothing. That's because the relay isn't energized. It's not triggered. So there's no power flowing between, uh, between those two pins. Our power source in on our 30 pin and our power out to our device on our 87 circuits. There, there's nothing going on yet. I'm going to take a 9 volt battery and energize the relay with that and uh, demonstrate the switching of the relay. So right now we have uh, our meter connected to our 30 circuit in, 30 pin, and to our 87 out, to our device. So now if I want to fire off the relay, I just have to connect our two trigger wires, our 85 and our 86 wires, to the 9 volt battery. And you can hear the, hear the relay click. and you can hear that we have a, a continuous circuit now so whatever device we have connected on our yellow 87 wire is going to be powered at this point so if I take away power from the trigger wires the circuit opens and there's no connection between the two so that's how your basic relay works and you can connect these two trigger wires either way so I flip the battery around still works so you can either provide you know you, you just have to provide power on one of the trigger wires and a ground on the other one it doesn't matter which one you can't get it you can't get it wrong so that's how a, a basic relay operates and you can hear it switching there if I disconnect power here so we don't have to listen to it you can hear the relay you can hear the relay triggering here and what that is is just a uh, just a spring-loaded lever arm inside the relay it's a mechanical arm that connects two points and then and then the points are where the power flows out on the either the 87 or the 87a 
uh, side of the relay. So that's basically how a, a standard 30 amp cheapo relay works. Uh, they all pretty much work the same way. So you can get a 30 or a 40 amp uh, depending on what kind of power you need to run through the relay. Um, what I usually do to trigger a relay to make it simple to wire up is I'll take the one side of the trigger wire, whatever, whichever one is the black wire, typical for ground. I'll put a ring terminal on here, like a, you know, just your standard crimp on ring terminal. Um, I like to solder all my ring terminals, so I'll pull the insulator off and solder these. Um, put a ring terminal on it and use the mounting lug on the relay for my ground. So you put your ring terminal, run a screw through it, and that's one side of your circuit already ready to go. The other trigger wire gets 12 volts. So whatever, if you want to use a toggle switch, run 12 volt power through that to trigger your relay, that's fine. Um, and that will uh, energize the relay. Uh, you can also do it, you know, if you need to send a ground signal, if you don't want to run power from the front to the back of the truck, uh, you want to run a ground, a ground circuit instead um, so that you don't have a live 12 volt wire running down your frame rail that could chafe and short out and cause you all kinds of electrical problems. You can run a ground wire to, uh, to trigger the relay. And then what you would do is you'd take your 30, which is your power coming into the relay, make sure I got the right one here, take your 30 and one side of your trigger wire, you connect these two together and you provide your power to it, okay, your battery power or whatever, uh, whatever your power source is, you, you run into this side, which energizes one side of the trigger system, and it energizes your 30 wire to provide power out. Then all you have to do is ground the other side of the trigger wire. So you could run a ground signal to this from a toggle switch, and instead of having to run power through the toggle switch, you would run ground through the toggle switch. So I don't know if I explained that very well for you guys, but um, that's how your basic 12 volt relay works. Um, you can pick these up on Amazon or eBay or your local e electronic stores for, uh, you know, not much. They're cheaper than a buck a piece, including the pigtail. Um, and the nice thing about these pigtails is they, they have slots on them, a slot and a tab, and you can connect multiple uh, pigtails together so you can run two relays side by side or ten relays side by side, doesn't matter, however many you want. I'm going to get back to wiring up here on the P48 project and uh, maybe get some lights to flash here later on today. Okay guys, so I got my soldering done here on the uh, last three ring terminals that need to connect to the ignition switch. Um, I've got to heat shrink those as soon as they cool off a little bit so I can touch them. Um, and then connect them up to the ignition switch, put the ignition switch back in the dash, and um, then I'll be good to go to connect the batteries. So I'm going to uh, heat shrink these right now and uh, get this wrapped up. Okay guys, well I'm sure it's super dark in here and you probably can't see me, but um, I've got the battery power hooked up to the computer, the ECM, and I've got all of the ignition switch wiring hooked up now and I've started doing all my tests to make sure um, that I have power where I should have power and I don't have power where I don't want power. Um, and I did, have, uh, I did have two wires that I had to clip. Uh, and I'll have to pull back out of the harnesses that were redundant wires that um, had power when they shouldn't have. So, uh, you know, no matter how careful you are, sometimes you miss something. Um, so I've uh, resolved all that, and I've got power to my turn signal switch. I've got power to my turn signal indicators. Uh, I've got power to my headlight circuit. I checked that at the chassis harness. Um, and what I'm doing right now is pulling the codes out of the ECM because I am getting my check engine light flashing uh, as it should be. I, I connected the data link connector wire uh, for the diagnostic test port, which is the white and black wire um, on pin, I think it's A14 uh, of the ECM. So I grounded that, which is what you're supposed to do when you normally would 
use a paper clip and ground it at the OBD1 port or the, they call it the ALDL uh, or the DLC data link connector. So when you ground uh, pins A and B on the DLC connector, um, you're grounding out that diagnostic test port. So I've just connected a, a ground wire to a chassis ground uh, so I could get the check engine light to flash so I can write down the codes that the computer is reporting um, so I can make sure it's not reporting anything that I n don't know that I don't have connected. So I need to check the codes and see uh, make sure there aren't any codes unrelated to what I know isn't disconnected. Well guys, that pretty much wraps it up for me for today. Um, successful day. Uh, we knocked out a big chunk of the wiring that was remaining. Uh, got all the relays working, got power to the dash, power to the ECM, we got turn signal power. So the chassis harness is getting power where it should be getting power. It's not getting power where it's not supposed to be getting power. Uh, the computer fired up and uh, is giving us a few DTC codes, diagnostic trouble codes, um, which it was to be expected. The good, the good part about that is it's not giving me any codes for sensors that are connected or for, uh, you know, unexpected codes that that I wasn't anticipating. So that's good. That means the computer is working. That means um, all of the sensors are working, the wire harness was put back together correctly after being shortened and having all the extra wiring pulled out of it. So that's good. Um, the codes that I am getting are uh, number 12 which is diagnostic mode, that just means it's in diagnostic mode. 43 is the knock sensor and I have the knock sensor currently disconnected because I did make that sectional harness just a little too short. I um, actually made the pigtail the right length, but I, when I loomed it into the, the main part of the engine harness loom, I loomed it a little too short. So uh, I need to fix that uh, and connect up the knock sensor. And uh, the fuel pump circuit. Uh, the fuel pump circuit means that the pin that is supposed to be monitoring uh, power going to the fuel pump isn't detecting any power, and that's because I wired that circuit wrong. Um, I put that relay in thinking that the ECM was going to trigger the relay and that was I was mistaken. Uh, what that wire is is a fuel pump voltage sensing circuit. So basically you connect that to the same input source uh, for your switch key power. So when the relay is energized and turned on and the fuel pump is running that pin on the ECM should be getting the 12 volt signal uh, from the fuel pump that it just letting the computer know that the fuel pump is now running. Um, there were three other codes that the computer was reporting. Uh, code 59 which is trans transmission fluid temperature sensor. Uh, 67 which is torque converter solenoid circuit. And 82 which is shift solenoid circuit. All three of those are transmission related which were related to the 4L60E that we took out of this uh, 94 or took out of the 94 donor truck. Uh, I will uh, figure out how to fool those circuits so that those those codes are cleared and don't recur because uh, they don't want those coming up. Uh, the only time I want the check engine light to flash is when there's actually a problem related to the motor. So, so tomorrow I'm going to get all this uh, wire loom loomed back up, taped up, um, cleaned up so that it looks decent under the under the dash and then I'm going to start pulling the fuel lines. So uh, we're making good headway here. I'm hoping if I get this bung, this replacement bung that they had misshipped originally um, this week then I will be able to fire this thing up uh, this week. So trying to get to that point. Um, not much content, wiring's kind of boring, um, but I hope maybe this gives you some insight into uh, you know an EFI swap that you may be working on or something that you're planning so that you'll be better prepared uh, for for your swap 
and for uh, issues you may run into, things you have to address, and possibly considerations that, that you hadn't thought of. So yeah, hopefully you can take that information and do something good with it for your project. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, please click like and subscribe if you like this kind of stuff, and I'm going to keep uh, trying to deliver it to you.